Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. My name is Dr. Ray. I'm a small animal general practitioner and today I want to talk about epilepsy which is seizures in dogs and a nutritional consideration that you may want to discuss with your veterinarian that may help control or at least lessen the severity of seizures in dogs. So seizures in dogs will happen for a number of reasons. They may occur because um, your pet ingested a toxin. They may in occur secondary to a trauma, a car accident where the brain got, um, you know, got jostled. And they may be from a birth defect like hydrocephalus or the formation um, of the skull where the fluid, the spinal fluid needs to be draining. Um, may be related to um, a tumor, unfortunately. But there is a type of seizure activity called epilepsy. And epilepsy is a, um, not a, I guess a naturally occurring type of seizure. There wasn't an inciting cause that, you know, that, that sprung that on your pet. It was almost like a genetic predilection. They were meant at this time in their life to have seizures. Something didn't quite line up in the brain. And that usually occurs between the ages of one and five. So if um, your pet is developing seizures between the age of one and five, um, you know, obviously we need to get that diagnosis. So it is very, very important that you seek veterinary care and have that worked up. They will do a series of tests to rule things out. And when they have ruled out all the other causes, structural causes, toxins, trauma, etc., your pet may be diagnosed with idiopathic epilepsy. And so there are various ways to treat that. Obviously, pharmaceutical intervention, depending on the severity of your pet's seizures, is going to be the gold standard. So there are medications out there that are used, such as phenobarbital, Keppra, Zanisamide. There's there's many, many, many um, pharmaceutical medications that we can use in pets to help facilitate facilitate lowering the frequency, lowering the severity of seizures. But it's important to know that when, as veterinarians, we treat a patient that has seizures and we put them on pharmaceuticals, the goal of being on that medication is not to completely in eliminate the seizures. And I know that can be disappointing for a lot of you because a seizure is a very traumatic event. When a client comes in and their pet has experienced a seizure, um, they are often very, very distressed. The pet is distressed, um, and it can be it can be very traumatic for everyone. However, it's important in those situations to really stay calm, try to document the time, um, you know, that the seizure lasted, so the actual physical um, tonic clonic, um, you know, uh, convulsing. So uh, most of the time, you know, it's only going to be thirty seconds. You know, maybe a minute. We'll, you know, clients will come in and say, "Oh my gosh, they've been seizuring for ten minutes." And it does seem like that when you're in the moment, but um, if you can, and I'm sure you're watching this video because you have a pet that has been diagnosed with a seizure disorder, try really hard to document the amount of time, what was happening directly before the seizure, you know, put it on a calendar, how long did the seizure last, and then make sure your pet is in a confined, um, you know, and safe area. I never recommend putting your um, fingers or anything, any object in your pet's mouth. Um, I know that you know, there's been a lot of information that they, you know, that they may bite their tongue and they may swallow their tongue and they may bite their tongue and that does happen. But all in all, it, there is, there's really no significant worry that anything like that serious is going to happen. So please do keep your fingers out of your pet's mouth because they don't know what's going on. And so you could, you know, you could not only have an issue with your pet, you know, needing medical attention, but you could find yourself needing some serious medical attention as well. So just make sure you turn the lights down low, try to reduce all the stimulation. Um, if you have maybe a a, um, you know, a comforter or a pillow that you can slide around them, put under their head, just keep them from maybe hitting their head or hurting themselves in the safest way possible. That's the best thing to do because it will last a very, normally a really short period of time. Now, if the seizure is lasting longer or does last longer than two, three minutes, then you do need to seek a medical attention because there can be some temperature issues and brain stimulation issues that need to be addressed. So if the seizure lasts more than two to three minutes to do as soon as the pet is recovered from that, get them safely in the car and get them to um, your veterinarian or an emergency facility for further care. Now, that is the mainstay treatment for seizures. But there are things, there are considerations that maybe you can do at home um, that can help, again, lessen the frequency and lessen the severity. And what I wanna talk to you today about is the inclusion of medium chain triglycerides, MCTs, for the adjunctive treatment of idiopathic epilepsy 
in our canine patients. So what makes the MCT or the medium chain triglyceride um, an important and effective adjective treatment for seizure disorders. So during a seizure, the brain is in a really high metabolic state. It is utilizing glucose very quickly and depleting the glucose supply very quickly. Shortly after the seizure activity, the brain goes into a hypo or a decrease metabolic state. And in that decreased metabolic state is where the problem arises. That decreased metabolic state is theorized to be what perpetuates and causes further damage and continued seizure activity in our epileptic patients. So what MCTs do is provide an alternative energy source for the brain to utilize in that time when it cannot use glucose, therefore decreasing that decay and destruction of brain tissue from the inability to utilize glucose for its normal function. The important thing and why MCTs specifically are utilized for this alternative energy source is because they have the ability to cross the blood brain barrier. And so um, the brain, because it is, you know, the powerhouse of the body and theoretically one of the most important organs in the body has a barrier. And so a lot of chemical compounds, nutrients, etc., cannot cross what we call the blood brain barrier. It's secluded. Only a few things can cross it. That's why certain medications, like flea medications and certain heartworm medications and other oral medications, don't affect a pet systemically. It's because they do not cross that blood brain barrier. Well, MCTs do. And so, in the time of need, those MCTs can cross the blood brain barrier and provide the brain with that alternative energy source. And so so it can continue to function even though it cannot use glucose. And so that's the theory behind the use of MCTs to help lower the, the seizure um, frequency and severity in dogs that are diagnosed with idiopathic epilepsy. Okay, so what diet am I talking about? I'm talking about the Purina NeuroCare. And the Purina NeuroCare does utilize the MCTs to help put together a complete and balanced diet that has been clinically, scientifically proven to lower um, seizure activity in dogs that have been diagnosed with idiopathic epilepsy. And so I'm gonna reference you to this paper um, and I will post I will post a link for it in the description box so that everybody can read through it. So for after 84 days of feeding the Purina NeuroCare exclusively, dogs receiving the diet had a 32% less seizure activity than dogs that did not, dogs that were in the control group. And that is a significant improvement, especially when you are already um, you know, giving your pet multiple medications and um, you just wanna do better. We always wanna do better. And this is an opportunity to do better. Client reported surveys um, of the you know, clients that utilize this diet in their pets for the study, 100% of them said they would recommend this diet to other pet owners that had pets that were experiencing seizures. And so that means a lot. Now, um, the amount of MCT they used in the diet was 9%. They worked through that number to find that that was the most optimum number. So less than that did not have as good seizure um, efficacy. Higher than that caused issues with pancreatitis. So 9% was the magic number of MCTs that provided the most optimal result. And so the natural question is, do you need to feed the Purina NeuroCare or can you just buy an MCT supplement and add it to the diet? The answer is no, you cannot. The reason being is those MCTs are interacting with other compounds within the diet. It's a total package. It's a total delivery of nutrients and a total delivery of that alternate energy source that the brain needs to utilize. And so you cannot simply just buy um, an MCT supplement and add it to your pet's diet and get the same effect. You have to stick to a strict diet um, using the NeuroCare if you wanna see those optimum benefits. And so they did include that in the study and they did add 9% MCT oil um, to a regular diet and when they did that they only got 18% efficacy in reducing the seizures versus 50% or greater when feeding the total NeuroCare diet. I thought this was extremely um, interesting. I did a lot of research after learning that wonderful uh, wonderful tip. I am always looking for different um, different 
tools to put in my veterinary toolbox. And so definitely utilizing diet, utilizing acupuncture, utilizing other integrative options, as well as using, using pharmaceuticals after getting a correct diagnosis, um, and talking to you guys, talking to your veterinarian, expressing your concerns, um, keeping your log, keeping your journal of your pet seizure activity, all those things play a really important part in giving your pet the best and happiest life and keeping them with us for as long as possible because that's all of our goals. And so I wanted to share that with you today, the Purina NeuroCare. I am gonna hop over to the website really quick so that we can check the diet out together and pair it against the Dr. Ray's Pet Food Scoring System. Now, I have not looked at it against the PSS. The reason being is this is a therapeutic diet. This is a prescription diet. There are things that are going to fall out of the norms for a regular dog because the dogs that we are feeding this diet to are not regular dogs. These are dogs with a condition. And so it is very important, I say this over and over again, is it is important to get a proper diagnosis for your pet, that way you can get a proper treatment. And so um, if your pet is having a seizure, please, please, please get with your veterinarian. This is a prescription diet. Talk about, you know, talk about the options and if this diet may be appropriate. There may be dogs that this is not appropriate. And so let's hop on over to the Purina website and check out the NeuroCare. This video is not sponsored, and I looked into this for my own personal benefit because I wanted an extra tool in order to share the best opportunities that I can with my patients. So when I heard about this diet, I did my own research, and so these thoughts um, are purely my own, and it is not sponsored by Purina in any way. All right, so here it is, the Purina um, Pro Plan Veterinary Diet NeuroCare. Um, it is a canine formula. The studies, um, I don't know if it was they didn't show that they were efficacious in cats or that um, they just simply didn't um, test them in cats, but this is a canine only, a canine only diet and the research that I'm sharing with you is the research that was done um, with canines in mind. And so you can see here, it's formulated with those medium chain triglycerides and they are supplied in a vegetable oil. There is an enhanced and unique blend of nutrients that go along with those medium chain triglycerides. So again, that's why the diet is important and not simply just adding MCTs on top of your pet's food. And there is issues, you know, with adding oils that can stem other conditions like pancreatitis. So we do, you know, this research was shown that this was the safest and most efficacious use of those MCTs. They have e EPA and DHA, omega-3 fatty acids. It is a chicken-based diet great taste and it is high in protein. So there you can see the ingredients, chicken, chicken meal, corn gluten meal, brewer's rice, ground yellow corn, ground wheat, vegetable oil, which is the source of the MCTs and so on and so forth. So um, we've got our guaranteed analysis here. We're going to go ahead and pop that against the Dr. Ray's pet, pet food scoring system. So we already know that it's not grain free and it's not raw. So we're gonna get two points for that. We're gonna get, let's see if it has an AFCO statement. Yes, it does. So animal feeding test, of course, because we know this food was tested. We just went over the research. Substantiate that the um, Purina Pro Plan Veterinary Diet Canine Formula provides complete and balanced nutrition for growth of puppies and maintenance of adult dogs, including the growth of large size dogs, 70 pounds or more. So this is an all life stage formula. Normally on the pet food scoring system, we would say um, that is not good. We do not want that. And we want a food that is specifically tailored to our dog's needs. But remember, we are not, this is a therapeutic diet. This is a diet that is being specifically selected for pets that have a condition. And so the fact that they are making this diet um, suitable for all patients, meaning if you have a puppy that starts seizuring at a year old or maybe earlier than a year old and your veterinarian thinks this, this may be a optimal you know, inclusion into the therapy plan, you can use it in a younger dog. It can be used for growth. Whereas um, I've run into issues with therapeutic diets where I wanna put a pet on a therapeutic diet and I cannot because it is not safe for puppies. And so this is actually a good thing. They're not gonna get the point because we are doing the pet food scoring system. But remember when we use the PSS on therapeutic diets and that's why I haven't really jumped into too many therapy diets, you are going to run into that issue where it may not quite match up because the PSS is for normal, healthy, no issue um, animals, okay? So we were at uh, two points for the ingredient list. We are at one point for the AFCO statement. We're going to get into, let's see, calories here. So the recommended feeding amount. So 25, a 20 pound dog and they are recommending one and a half cups. No, we want 363 calories. Let's see how many calories per cup. This is for the adult. One and a half at 394. Let's do that calculation. 
$5.91. So yes, that is going to be correct. Interesting bit of information here. This bag contains approximately X cups of food. So a six pound bag has 25 cups, 11 pound bag, 46, 25 pound bag, 106 cups. So that will give you an idea budgetary wise if this is something that you can afford. So calculate the number of cups your pet needs per day and then calculate how many cups are in the bag and then you will know your price to feed, which is different than sometimes what we um, talk about on this channel. I do think that um, price per pound is important, but cups or a, a cost to feed is probably more important. So you will be able to do that. If you can calculate your pet's resting energy requirement and feed amount, you can also calculate how many cups are needed and how many cups are in the bag. So that's bringing us up to four points. And so now we're going to go into the guaranteed analysis and see. Now this is an all life stage food. So we know it is probably not going to fit exactly, exactly, exactly into what um, we normally would want to see for an adult because it is very difficult, although not impossible, but very difficult to get a food to fit into both a growth, a puppy and an adult and, and even a senior and be absolutely optimal. However, there are other alternative goals here in the seizure management, seizure reduction, qualities that are going into this. So we're gonna keep that into consideration. Let's go through this. They do list some of these other ingredients. They're not on the PSS system. We're not gonna be paying attention to those today. We've got the calcium, the minimum at 1.1, which is higher than what we would normally want. Phosphorus at 0 0.9, again, is gonna be higher than what we would normally want for an adult. Vitamin E has that 500 international units. We've talked about that. 500 and above is kind of that special number. So they are putting those extra antioxidants in there for the free radical and the scavenging um, properties there. Let's go into our protein. 29% is going to be good. Crude fat at 15% is going to be good. And fiber at 3% is going to be good. So they are going to lose only the two points on the minerals. So that is going to bring us up to, that's going to bring us up to a 7 out of 10. So a very good score in general. So in general, 7 out of 10, a very good score. But if your pet is having a seizure disorder and we can reduce, um, you know, reduce or augment the usefulness of the concurrent seizure treatment plan, um, it may be worth a lot. And you know, 100% of the um, consumers that were in the clinical trials would 100%, 100% recommend this to their peers. And so I think that that speaks loads. I'm excited about this product. I don't know why I didn't know about this product before. And so I do appreciate you guys hanging out with me and encouraging me to continue my education on nutrition and how I can utilize nutrition to improve the quality of life of my patients. So thank you all. Thank you all for doing that and instill and letting that fire within me um, because now I can take this information just like you can and I can utilize it to help make hopefully a lot of pets lives much happier and healthier and in the long run doing the same thing for you. So I'm glad you guys hung out with me today to learn about seizures, um, the use of MCTs in the supplementation and integrative um, augmentation to your pet's current seizure treatment treatment not a substitute for seizure therapy. Again, very important, not a substitute for pharmaceuticals. It is an augmentation of those and give you an option if your veterinarian hasn't already discussed it with you of a good option of something you may um, want to try out with your pet. So if you've used NeuroCare before, um, please share with us your experience with that product. I'd love to hear it. I'm starting to use it on some of my patients. And so hopefully um, we'll all have some great results that we can share with each other. So thank you for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.